How's it going guys? So in today's video, I'm gonna show you 10 really cool tips and tricks in Blender that can help you either with creativity, problem solving, or just honestly having fun in Blender, which is so important. So with that being said, let's get into those tips. All right, so the first trick is something I showed in my previous tutorial, and that is exaggerating your motion blur. So if you see it right here, and I just go ahead and I render it, it's gonna look like that. It's not really noticeable motion blur, but it's kind of the default standard motion blur. If I go over here to my shutter in the motion blur settings and I select five and I put my steps up to five as well and I render it, you're now gonna get this very interesting effect. And this is how it's going to look in Eevee. Here's another animation I did in cycles with this effect, which is much more smooth, much more different. But if you exaggerate it, you're gonna get a really interesting effect. Here's a fun one. So you can use these things called lattices and they help you deform more of your dense complex meshes all at once. So the way it works is you have your object, you'll hit shift A and go to this thing called lattice, and then I'm gonna hit S and scale it up till it fills up this space. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag and just give it a couple faces. You know, the more dense, the more complex your deformations. Then with your object selected, you'll get a lattice modifier and select this lattice. And then what you can do is just hit tab and then hit G and you can use proportional editing to adjust how you can deform this thing. And it's really, really cool. With this really cool node, you can use one material and make multiple colors on a bunch of different independent objects. So here's how it works. So say you just have your objects right here, they're individual pieces, but you don't wanna make an individual node for each one. So what you do is you'll get a color ramp and select all the colors you want. And these are kind of pre-positioned because of how I set it up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it into the emission as well to make it fun. Then what you can do is you can get a noise texture so that you can help manipulate this node. So now that's just going to apply those colors all over the place. Go ahead and get a mapping node. And the most important node here is object info. And this is going to basically see, oh, there's a bunch of different objects. Let's go ahead and apply them, in this case, randomly. And once you do that, you now have this random distribution. You can go over here to 4D on the noise texture, and you can actually play with which ones have what color, and you can use your color ramp to decide how much of each color is going to be displayed. It's very cool. If you want to see, this is the whole node tree all the way into the material output. You can copy that and do a bunch of really cool things with it. So this one is called proportional editing. So I'm just going to get a basic plane, and I'm going to subdivide it by a 30 here. So what you can do with proportional editing, if I go to edit mode and say I pick a, a vertice right here, and then if I just hit G to move it, it's just gonna move all of the faces that are uh, connected to it. But if I go right up here and I select proportional editing and do the same thing, I just hit G, and I use my scroll wheel, you can actually now proportionally move everything there. But here's what's really cool about that. It has some presets. And the really cool one that I find useful in many different examples is clicking random. Now, it's going to randomly bring up and down these faces. And then now you have a low poly mountain um, or a building block to something next. All right, this next tool is a shameless self-promotion that you are welcome to skip if you'd like to. And it's my add-on real-time materials. It's a collection of currently 290 procedural materials. So you can go ahead and say, add these broken tiles, just add it with one click. And you have sliders like adding broken tiles here or even switching them to a nice blue. The cloth materials are honestly my favorite ones. Let's go ahead and add, say, this knitter here. You can zoom in and see all these nice details. You can maybe switch that over here. You can change the direction of the knit. So now they went to the opposite direction. You can also add uh, dirt to them. So now they're dirty. You can add no color variation or add color variation to them. The carbon fiber ones are super cool. Just again, adding that with one click, you can scale them up and now you have a carbon fiber. And really nice ones here like this paint. You can just add that one click, go ahead and change your color to be whatever you'd like it to be. All your parameters are nice and editable for flexibility, which is why I made it. If you use this exclusive code right now, linked in the description, you can get 25% off. That is exclusive for people watching this specific video. So if you wanna check it out, hit the link in the description. Now to the next tip. If you weren't aware, you can actually create your own HDRIs inside of Blender with whatever environment you're working with. So I have this kind of interesting, weird looking scene set up right here. And I have my camera kind of here in the middle just like that. So here's how it works. Create a scene with some kind of emissive property, lighting, whatever. It doesn't really matter, but there needs to be lighting. And then you can set up your camera. And then in the camera settings, you can go from perspective to panoramic, and then you can go to EQ, EQ rectangular. And then I'm gonna hit G and middle click. And I'm just gonna bring my camera in a little bit. Now you have this 360 
uh, degree look up and down and make sure that you are and make sure that you're at 1920 by 960. Uh, there's some other variables there, but that's the one that I'm comfortable with that doesn't give me any distortion. And then the last important thing is, and right where it normally says PNG sequence, go to Radiance HDR. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna render this out and apply it to a new scene. All right, so I got this sphere and I added one of the materials from the material pack I mentioned. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the world, go ahead and get an environment texture, open, and I'm gonna to navigate to that HDRI I rendered. So it's right here, I'm gonna double click it. And now you have this lighting. What you can do is actually turn it off of the ray visibility so we can just see that. And this is now my custom lighting that I created from myself. So if you're ever dealing with say copyright issues or just wanting to make everything, you can now do it you can create your HDRIs. It's been available for a long time and it's such a cool feature. Now, if geometry nodes is something that is extremely confusing to you and not really something you're interested in dealing with, let me show you a really cool feature of it that I like to use it for sometimes. So everyone knows if you have a cube and you go ahead and you subdivide it, that you are you are set here. Once you click away, you can either add more faces, but you can't really take them away. The word for this would be destructive modeling. But the really cool thing is if I just add in a plane here and I go to geometry nodes, and then I go ahead and click new, and then I delete that, and I replace the plane with say, a cube. Now, if I'm working in a scene where what I start out with is a cube, I can go ahead and add vertices. But what's great about this is at any point, as long as the modifier is not applied, you can take vertices away. And you can do that with a lot of different primitives. So if you were dealing, so you can go to your mesh primitives and say, let's let's go ahead and use a cylinder in this case. So now we have a cylinder. You can add and take away vertices at any point. You can also add fill segments here and you can do side segments here. And so even if this is the most that you use geometry nodes for just to have a non-destructive primitive model. I find it to be so useful in a lot of different occasions. And yes, it's kind of a weird roundabout way to have non-destructive modeling, but I find it to be very useful and you might as well. All right, so let's check out this animation I quickly made here. Now, what I'm animating here and what I wanna highlight is playing with the focal length of your camera. It's just gonna add this insanely interesting looking element to your animations right here where it just adds this interesting variety where I pull it, I push it back in and then I pull it back out. I kind of let it sit for a little bit. You kind of ride that out and then pulling it back in like that. It's just another way you can add detail to animations. So let me show you how that works. I'm gonna kill the keyframe. And then, so right now this is just kind of the default. We're at 49.4 millimeters, which your default is usually 50 like that. So what you can do is you can start your, you can start your animation off. I'm gonna select keyframe and go this far. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it really wide. And so now we have this. And then we can really quickly spring it right back into 90, which that's gonna look crazy. See, which is a bit much. Let's stretch that out, make it more tasteful. So bring it out and then you can bring it back in, which is a bit honestly too much, but you get the idea. And then maybe we can bring it far back again, keyframe. And so now once we're here, you can add this really wild, really interesting looking effect. Now I did it very sloppy, very messy. You'd want to fine tune that and polish it. But if you're looking for some interesting ways to add some creativity to animations, animating your focal length is a very easy and very effective way to add something interesting to what you're working on. All right, now this is something I showed in an animation like three or four years ago, but it's this bounce keyframe. This is done very, very simply. So here's how it works. This is the object that I'm animating. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear my keyframes. And before I animate anything, I'm gonna to go to my edit and my preferences and go to the animation. And right over here where it says default interpolation, we're gonna change it and just change it from linear to bounce. And now I'm gonna take this triangle here. I'm gonna start it at negative 35.3 and click that. And then I'm gonna to go to the end and I'm gonna hit I to add it. And right here in the middle, I'm just gonna do positive 35, play that. And then if I just press play, it is gonna automatically make this bouncing keyframe. And there's a bunch of other presets in there as well. The bounce one tends to be kind of the more artistic and bombastic one, but it's very fun and it makes this kind of thing very easy to do. All right, this last one is a really cool shading trick. So if you have a material with some kind of smooth gradient going on, so I have this color ramp plugged into a noise texture plugged into my principal BSDF. So if you have a gradient, what you can do is right before this color ramp or right before the gradient, go ahead and get a map range. 
And you can throw that there. It's not going to change anything by default. But once you can go from linear to step linear, and now it's going to create this. And the more steps, the more detail it's going to be. So if you bring it all the way over here, that's your gradient. But you can just add some steps into there and creates this really cool effect. And then say, hey, let's go ahead and get a bump node, throw that here, and throw the color ramp right into the height. Now you're going to get this really cool effect just simply with this just simply with an interesting effect here with the step linear having some fun with it so there you guys go that is the 10 tips and tricks in blender if you like them if you learn some stuff feel free to throw me a like and let me know what else you want to see in the future this is a series that i want to continue doing uh, but with that being said thank you guys for watching if you want to get that discount code for real-time materials uh, that is going to be in the description thank you guys for watching and i hope you learned something